Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. Today I have my friend Ellen Terry with me. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Ellen is a crochet whiz, and I know a lot of you who watch crochet. I know there is a lot of crocheters in our area, and a lot of the crocheters I know do single crochet, do double crochet, do one afghan, do one thing. And Ellen used to be like you. It's very true. And now Ellen is a super dynamo. <laughs> I don't know about super dynamo. Okay, but she's a petite power. That's true. <laughs> okay, so tell us, I think your story might be like others, tell me when you started to crochet and how you learned. Well, I started to crochet when I was, I think, five. Which I don't really... might not be like all of you. Maybe but. not. I don't really remember an exact age. I just have vague memories of sitting on my grandmother's lap and she would babysit me while my mom was off doing aerobics and she would just help me move my hands and I learned I think a single crochet stitch first and made a little pot holder and my mom also crochets so she was able to give me some guidance when I got home but I don't really have an exact memory of having this is when I started and this is my first project it was um, just kind of my a heritage from my family we just passed on a lot of different crafting techniques so from there, I would look up new stitches, look up new patterns, and... Oh, I have to hold on a minute. So you basically don't remember a time when you didn't crochet. That's very true. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to say to people who are out there, I know sometimes people will ask me, when should I start to learn to knit? When can I teach my kids or my grandkids? And I know people who have knitted and crocheted from four and five. Once you start to grasp a crayon or a pen, it's just about small motor movements. Mm -hmm. So if you can do that, you can knit or you can crochet, and it, it doesn't take a lot of know-how. It just takes a practice of learning and relearning that movement. Yes. So at what age did you start looking up other stitches? That would have probably been when I was 13, maybe. Um, I again, don't have a whole lot of memories, clear memories of this is what I was working on when I was eight, this is what I was working on when I was nine. I just always had yarn in the house, I always had a hook and I could pick up and do whatever I really wanted to, but I kind of got tired of using just the same old stitches, let's do a row of half double crochet, let's turn around and do another row of half double crochet. I wanted to make something that didn't look childish or grannyish. So I started looking up new stitches when I was in middle school. That kind of fell to the side when I was in high school because I was very involved in music and other activities but in college I picked it back up again and that's when I really started to realize there's so much more out there, there in the world of crochet and the world of fiber arts so well, especially I think if we're going to talk about one crochet with knitting you've got one stitch there's basically one stitch you do it forwards it's the knit stitch you do it backwards it's the purl stitch and everything else is a combination of one stitch with crochet so versatile. You are working one loop at a time. You can turn it, you can go in a circle, you can go in a row, you can never stop your row and make the lar world's largest <laughs> chain ever. Yes. <laughs> you can um, make baubles, you can make flowers, um, you can connect that one loop to any other loop on your project anyhow. And it's, it's very, very versatile. Mm -hmm. um, was there a particular project you were looking at when you were 13 and wanted to learn different stitches or was just you were doing a long row and you just wanted to learn a different stitch? Um, I think I really was interested in scarves at the, that point in time mm -hmm. and honestly I was a little bit of a show off so I would bring my crochet to school, <laughs> sit in science class when I had my work done. Oh, and, it. Yeah, total crochet nerd even as, at 12 but I again didn't really get into projects along this type of line until I was a little bit older. Yes. Um, and Ellen has mentioned in passing about being very into music in, did you say, high school? Oh, I actually started um, p piano lessons about the same time I started crochet. And I think that also helped develop those fine motor skills that mm. you need to be able to do this kind of work. And it also indicates you're a person who can sit down and concentrate. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Actually, to a fault, it drives my husband nuts because he's not that type of person. 
also to speak of your day job, because some people might know you. Ellen does live here in Rochester, and you might recognize her, but you might recognize her husband a little more because he works in town and mm -hmm. Ellen works in Peru. Can you tell us what you are by day? <laughs> what I am. Uh, I'm actually a band and choir director. I teach at Peru Junior High School, and my husband is the choir director here in Rochester, so he teaches at Rochester High and Rochester Middle. So it's a music-saturated environment in our house. And a little bit of fiber thrown in. Yes, yeah, so, well, uh, more than a little. <laughs> and Parker is working on his own crocheted afghan. Yes, actually, so, he just finished it. He did. He I did. was going to say, if he continues on in this stretch, he'll have to come in on my man show. <laughs> yes, that, that's, I think that's very encouraging to see more men getting involved in fiber arts as well. And there's no reason why they can't. I no. don't see why it makes you feminine to uh, hold textiles or do anything with textiles, because we all wear them, right? Just got to say that while yes. we're there. Put in a little plug for the manly knitter, manly crocheter. So back to this. Okay. You were um, knitting, crocheting. You were experimenting a little more. You're into music. You got your job. And then another life change happened. Yes, that's very true. Uh, my husband and I have actually struggled with infertility for many years and had given up on having our own child when we miraculously found out we were pregnant. And we had a beautiful baby girl named Charlotte. And if you're, actually, you may be familiar with the name Charlotte Ann or Charlotte Terry if you live in the area, simply because of her story. She was eight months old, so we're coming up on a year since we got the news that she had cancer. And it was a very um, rare, serious form of cancer that happened in her brain. And she was actually born with it, so. It was very, very it's rare. Very rare. I think she was like the 310th person ever to have this type of cancer, so. That was a huge shock to our systems, and my summer plans went from, you know, watching my beautiful baby girl grow up and play with her and spend time with her to sitting in Riley Hospital, watch my daughter get the harshest chemotherapy that, that is available to somebody under the age of one. And there's a lot of time when you're just sitting watching your baby get drugs. So I took yarn with me, and that's when crochet became more than just something I did as a hobby. I, within the span of a month, I made two massive afghans, and I was just constantly crocheting. It was very calming to have something in my hands, something mm -hmm. to do. And it's something tactile, it's yes. soft, and it's reassuring, and plus it was a movement that you were mm -hmm. used to and had calmed you already. Well, and hospitals are cold. I mean, I'm telling you, if there are oh. any knitters or crocheters out there thinking, I want to donate, hospitals are cold places. Blankets are always welcome. So mm -hmm. it was nice just have an afghan on my lap that I was working on to keep me warm. Yeah, and I know a lot of quilters out there as well who have done Linus blankets, mm -hmm. um, donation to children's hospitals. I know other people who've made backpacks for children who are um, taken into foster care in the middle of the night, and I know our church in Plymouth does that, where there will be a coloring book and a pair of pajamas and something cold, uh, something warm for when you're cold emotionally as well as physically. Yes. It can be a real blessing. And I think the emotional coldness, that it, mm. you could be in the warmest environment and you just feel yeah. so... Numb. Numb. Yeah, that's a very accurate way to put it. So Charlotte ended up uh, dying July 31st, and I was so lost. I just... I went right back to school just to... Right, it started immediately. Yeah, it was two days after her funeral. I was back in school. And... Uh, not that my school wouldn't have given me the time off. My school was very wonderful, very understanding. But I needed something to keep me busy because just being at home was miserable. It was awful. So in the few hours that I did have to be at home, I couldn't just sit there. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't stand to look at just the accoutrements of having had a newborn in the house. So I picked up my hook and I just crocheted and I went a little crazy actually I was making so many things but I just had to have something to work on and uh, since that has happened I've read so many articles online of people working through depression working mm -hmm. through grief with knitting or with crocheting it's a very calming focused way to just center yourself when it feels like everything is out of control right just movement and a movement mm -hmm. and a movement it can be a real Zen to it, yes, and uh, and sometimes too, just to achieve a calm and a peace, and to allow God to speak with you inside of that. Sometimes you know, you can't make God speak, but no. <laughs> just to have something to to do and have your hands on, it can yeah. be it can be very good. 
um, and you have created some beautiful things from that time, both patterns and um, items, which we will talk about. And as well, you've got other plans and other hopes yes, that have grown true. out of your crochet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a hard road for my husband and I. Um, we have some very difficult decisions to make uh, regarding fertility, regarding future family planning, because only four or five months after Charlotte died, we found out we were pregnant again and then had a very serious miscarriage mm -hmm. right before Christmas. And at that point, I was just, I can't even remember very much of that time of my life. It was just so dark. Mm -hmm. And at that point, even just crocheting from somebody else's pattern wasn't mm -hmm. enough to keep my brain busy, to keep it centered. I was going through some very serious depression, so I started designing. And I designed specifically in honor and in memory of Charlotte. So the very first thing I designed was a baby blanket called the Sunshine Charlotte Blanket. Is that and I actually uh, sold it. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have it here today. But, but you designed it. But I designed it. So if people want to see that, they could look on a website? Mm -hmm. It's actually available on both my finished product website and on my pattern website. I sell finished products with my sisters. I have two sisters and a sister-in-law. We each do different crafts. So we all have a shop on Etsy called Such Devoted Sisters. Ah, yeah. Such Devoted Sisters. Very cute. And is this like a dot backslash, can you give us the whole thing? It's if you go for someone who's not familiar with Etsy, it's a wonderful online handcraft store mm -hmm. that sells both items and patterns. So the address to get to Such Devoted Sisters is www.etsy.com backslash shop backslash Such Devoted Sisters 4. And I believe we have that spelled out somewhere, so it should show up on screen. It's I'm the hoping. number 4? It's the number 4, okay. yes. Okay. If that's too confusing, go online, look up Google Etsy, E-T-S-Y, and when you're on there, there'll be a search Mm -hmm. thing as well and yep. you can put in such devoted sisters. Will they see a picture of your sisters and sister-in-law? Yes, if you go to our shop we actually, our banner and our um, profile picture is all four of us and you'll see which one is the sister-in-law simply because she's Filipino. We love her very much but the other three of us look very similar. Look, yeah. So will they see a picture of Charlotte if they go on there? Um, is there another website? That you would s be more likely to see a picture of Charlotte if you were to go to my pattern store which is, I, I have a a pattern store on Etsy and the same patterns available on Ravelry and mm -hmm. I'm hoping you've talked about Ravelry at some point in time. Let's take this moment for a little public service <laughs> announcement. All of you who have ever touched yarn should be on Ravelry. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ravelry, R-A-V-E-L-R-Y dot com. When you go on there it has, it's a beta, it's still in beta, it will probably always be in beta which means you need to have a username and a password in order to be on. They are not going to screen you, you just need a username and a password. And it's got to be a good username because there are how many people on that thing? It's like three million About or something three million like on it. So all of the usernames are taken and you might need to use your own name or like Crazy Crochet or 27 or 7,000 because... Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there are at least 7,000 of those out there. <laughs> so pick that out and once you go onto the full website there are different screens. One of them is like a um, scrapbook where you can write down all the information for your project. That alone I have found it to be worthwhile because yes. you can say what hook you used or what set of needles where you know you pull it out because you're going to bring it right back and then you don't and then you need to. Mm -hmm. Oh I can't tell you how many times I've frogged a project because I realized the top half's bigger than the bottom half. And what is frog, Alan? Oh, frogging means to rip out because you made a mistake and it's you usually like 20 rows back so it's like three hours worth of work. But And so you rip it, rip it, rip it and honestly that's where frog has come from. Yeah. Yeah, the frog pond. Mm -hmm. Back to what we were already <laughs> talking about. Do you remember what it was? Um, I uh, the Four Sisters of Shop and your pattern shop. Yes. So your pattern shop must be on Ravelry. Yes, it's actually both available both on Etsy and on Ravelry. And okay. again, if you go to either of those and search for Sunshine Charlotte, that's you'll you'll find my shop very quickly. And I assume Sunshine and Charlotte are spelled the traditional ways. Yes, they are. But just to be clear, because I've actually had a lot of people misspell Charlotte. Okay. Charlotte is C H A R L O T T E. I think most people know there's an O in there. They just don't know where to put it. Okay. <laughs> so Sunshine Charlotte. If they go on that. Um, on either Etsy or Ravelry, they'll see the original blanket that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. 
they'll see the pattern. You could purchase the pattern. And this, I find this amazing. You could also just contact Ellen and purchase. She would make you one. Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. I love custom orders. I'm actually working on one right now. She's not, I am not Ellen, and I praise her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To each their own, I suppose. Yes. But um, when my husband and I, were, when we still had Charlotte, we had talked about me eventually stopping teaching and maybe trying to find another way to supplement the income because I really mm -hmm. desired to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't pull it off financially with our jobs, both as teachers and the house and the bills we have currently. So um, I had thought about perhaps writing patterns or selling finished product as a way to supplement our household income and still be able to take care of a baby and stay home. When Charlotte died and we had to make some really difficult decisions about how are we going, are we going to have children in the future, what method are we going to use, we realized that where we are now with having had five miscarriages mm -hmm. and one uh, baby die after birth, we realized we're going to have to look at fertility options. Our OB has started to guide us towards some genetic testing because Charlotte's uh, tumor developed in utero. And if we choose not to go that option, mm -hmm. adoption is where we would look. And both of those are expensive routes. Babies are expensive. Yes. No matter how they come. Yes, they are. <laughs> but we're looking at probably fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of expenses, regardless of which route we cho choose to take. So this has gone from something that helped me heal and continues to help me heal and it's now a way that I'm trying to build towards a future family. It's beautiful. So we will take a break and we'll come back and see more of the patterns and the different things that Ellen has done. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back to In The Loop. We have Ellen Terry here. She's going to talk about some of her projects. I know some of you might have questions for her. She will have her information, her contact information uh, for you during this um, segment. We'll have it on the screen. And also, if you have any questions for me, if you uh, can't get a hold of her or if you want somebody else to come on, if this is sparking an idea in your mind, if you want to come on as my guest, please contact me at intheloop at rtc1.com. Back to Ellen. All right. Ellen, you have brought some patterns, uh, some created projects of some patterns that you have made and that you also sell, Yes, correct? What is an example of where you might sell this? I like to work in craft shows and uh, I make different projects depending upon what season it is. So right now it's coming up on the spring and summer season. I'm designing in colors that are more mm -hmm. apropos for the season and I have designed a couple of outfits that are more summary outfits. I like to do a lot of research online as to what people are making this time of year and I see a lot of adorable outfits for little girls, especially dresses and skirts and diaper covers. So that's what I've been focusing on. And these are something that um, a grandma out there who has only made afghans, is she going to need to have any particular lesson or is there any hiccup that might happen if someone were to purchase this? Well, that's the beauty of these patterns is that uh, so many people I've talked to say, well, I can only do single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. That's all I know. I'm like, you know everything. You can do the world with those. <laughs> yeah, that's all any of these patterns use. I mean, this one, this blanket here only uses double crochet. And it's just a matter of using them and manipulating them in a way that is explained very clearly in all of the patterns. And in, in my patterns, if I come up on something that I think that might be a little challenging mm -hmm. for somebody, I include a photo tutorial. So you scroll down to the bottom of the pattern, there's step by step, I take a picture of how to perform each stitch. So if you're overwhelmed, usually there's a photo tutorial at the bottom. I found that there are a lot of online resources that are very helpful. There are. Yeah, and I'm always open if you're struggling to come up with how, to, how do I do round eight? It's not making sense. I have an email and I respond to that multiple times daily and I like to give advice. I actually just had somebody who purchased a pattern for me and she said, I cannot figure this round out. So I did a personalized Aww. photo tutorial for her and sent it to her and that helped her finish the project. That's fantastic. Yep. Great pattern support is very helpful. So let's pull this first, well, let's pull this one since it's an all-inclusive. Okay. This yep. actually is not even available yet, but it will be available Hot by the off the presses. I think yep. it's still warm. <laughs> <from the> crochet <laughs> You can just see the smoke curling off of it. <laughs> but I did this one yesterday. So this is my newest pattern. It's currently in the testing stage, but this is a newborn baby romper. And rompers are really hot in crochet patterns right now. 
and especially rompers that are easy to get on and off. I yes. A lot of people like to knit or crochet, but then it's like, oh, it's impossible to get my baby in and out of this for quick diaper changes. Let's take a closer look. Uh, and I think when you say that, I have seen so many of those beautiful baby pictures and the person, the baby's in a little crocheted sack mm -hmm. and, you know, they had to shove that baby in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> and then hope the baby goes to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, you're going to have to cut that baby out of there. I don't see that working very well. But this, you saw how easy that is. And you have total con control when you create this yourself over how big that buttonhole is. Mm -hmm. And if, and I would encourage you, uh, that's even really cute. You've got a pattern going on underneath the dress. Oh, yeah. Got to keep it fancy over. even where you can't see it. And, of course, the little butterfly <laughs> flower. Yeah. Um, I would encourage you to purchase this and try it, to contact Ellen, and then if it's still too hard, <laughs> you can she can make it for you. That's so there are true. so many <laughs> options here. Let's go to this next outfit. Sure. This is actually my most popular pattern in my store right now. Um, this is what I call the Roughly Petal Baby Top, and it, was, it actually came after the, the oh. diaper cover did. <laughs> so this is the diaper cover, and it uses only single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, the stitches that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. But it uses the front loop and back loop technique. I love that. Which I think just can take your work so far without really having to do much more work. And you don't have to sew. I've used that. That's very to true. To create flowers. Oh. Yes, it's wonderful. And again, with this pattern, I have included a tutorial on how to do the front loop only, the back loop only. So if you aren't sure what that means, you can check out the photo tutorial or look up resources online. And then underneath it, both of them. Yep, buttons just like the last one, so you can slip it on and off very easily. Uh, my testers have been very pleased with this pattern, and I, this pattern's only been out for a month, and I've sold it probably 30 times. So Yay, a lot of people loving it. Even easier because you don't have the <coughs> the buttons, but you know that's not a big deal. So, do you really stick the baby? This is just for diaper changes. Yep. You shove the baby down there. <laughs> well, I don't shove babies anywhere, but. <laughs> Uh, so after I made the skirt, one of my testers requested a matching top because she wanted to make an Easter outfit for her granddaughters. And I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. I had never made a top before, so this is the same basic idea mm -hmm. as the skirt, but then the straps are very easy shaping. It looks intimidating because, like, oh my gosh, there are straps, there's armhole shaping, but it's all the same stitches we've been using. It's very easy as long as you're counting correctly. Crochet is not hard. And this, nope. this you can change out for anything. I, I assume that's just decorative. Yes. It doesn't really yep. produce much. And from the back. And she also has a cute little hat, right? Yes, I do, do all have three a, are all three in the same pattern, or are they purchased separately, or you, you can, can purchase choose? them separately, or you can purchase them as a set, and it's cheaper to buy the set. Cheaper to buy the set. Yep. Well, gosh, I'm sold. <laughs> <coughs> Yes, and that is, that's precious. And then we have a third piece that is also a baby item. Yep. And this is, uh, a lot of you, if you crochet, will probably recognize this pattern because it is the basic chevron or ripple blanket. And a lot of people get intimidated by this pattern, especially beginners. They're like, I can crochet a straight row, but I've never, I've never been able to do this. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? This is so easy to do. Like I said, it's all double crochet, and it's just a matter of increasing some stitches here at the top of the peak and decreasing down here. And for those of you who feel like, oh, that's really intimidating, this pattern is actually part of my beginner series. Mm -hmm. I publish patterns f specifically for beginners. They all include photo tutorials very step by step. And they're half the price of my regular patterns because oh, cool. you're a beginner, you just need some help. And I've sold several of these uh, patterns to people who are trying to learn. I actually taught somebody this pattern in person and every response I get is, oh, that's so easy, why haven't I been doing this all along? And this mm -hmm. is actually, um, it's becoming my most popular item in my finished product store as well. So mm -hmm. I sell the pattern and I sell the finished product. For those of you who have made these at home, I appreciate something that Ellen pointed out that for the first row, or the last row. Yeah, the first row of each color. <coughs> first row of each color, she crochets into the back loop only. And that provides a raised, I don't, is it possible to see it on the screen? Mm -hmm. A raised edge at each color change. <coughs> And so, Ellen, you sell these um, beginning patterns mm -hmm. and other patterns on your store, and yes. you also sell the finished products if someone is like, I think that's great, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, like I said, to each their own, but I love to crochet um, just in my spare time, and 
because you know as music teachers we have a whole lot of that <laughs> but it's really cathartic and healing for me to be able to crochet something for somebody else's baby mm. I don't have a baby anymore to crochet for and babies are so much fun to crochet for because there's so many cute patterns out there I think you have a lot of people hooked right now out there <laughs> yes 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 babies Can I pause this? <laughs> gotta go get go get some yarn so, yeah so how would people reach you to either purchase the pattern or the item or to find out where you might have a craft show well, the best place to find out all of this information is honestly our Facebook pages. Mm. I have a Facebook page for both of my shops. My sisters and I have Such Devoted Sisters on Facebook, and if you just go to www.facebook.com slash Such Devoted Sisters, you'll find us. And you can find my pattern information on uh, Facebook again. It's Such, sorry, it is Sunshine Charlotte. And that's again, www.facebook.com slash Sunshine Charlotte those two pages have links to every other sh shop we have okay so if you start That's on helpful. Facebook you you'll be able to follow the links if you would like to purchase and sure. every picture I post has links to my Etsy store my Ravelry store my craftsy shop you'll be able to find me you're an organized lady yeah <laughs> oh thank you so much for being on and showing us your beautiful things and say hi to Ellen if you see her in the community thank you for coming